thinking about her mother's death makes Chelsea Brent furious. I don't even have a word for it. Like it's, it blows my mind. It makes me beyond angry. Last November at her Vancouver apartment, Tracy Gunderson died while frantically begging for help. At 8.15 that morning, she made her last phone call to 911. BC Ambulance for what city, please? Vancouver, I'm what? bleeding for you. Hang on, what's the address you need help to, ma'am? An ambulance was dispatched. Tell me when the paramedics get there, okay? How am I going to get to the buzzer? Within five minutes, paramedics were at the front door of the building. I right can't open you. the door. You said it's unlocked, though, is that right? Yeah, but the buzzer. You can't get to the buzzer. Okay. Okay, just stay on the line with me here. We're going to figure out a way in, okay? Oh, my God. The call was deemed non-life-threatening. That means an ambulance was dispatched, not fire. BC's year-old emergency dispatch system sends ambulance and fire only to what are deemed the most critical calls. But it's only fire that has access to the lockbox that lets you into multi-unit buildings. So what we don't want is two resources tied up on one incident where they're going to arrive approximately the same time. The new policy has reportedly led to a 30% drop in medical calls to the fire department. One of the, the main tenets of emergency response is to send as many resources as you can within reason to an incident and then scale it back as needed. 35 minutes after the 911 call, paramedics finally got to Tracy Gunderson. They found her lying by her window, unresponsive, no pulse, and they were unable to resuscitate her. I don't know if she would have lived 100%, like I don't know her health and if she would have made it if fire had been there right away. But what I do know is no, one, no person should call for help and not receive it. The provincial government has ordered an independent review of the case. Belpuri, CBC News, Vancouver.